Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here from Social Flight with another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. Now we spend a lot of time working on the front instrument panel because of course that's where most of the action is. But we're doing something really cool here because of course this is a group project. We've got Jake and Ben and who knows whether I'm going to be the one winding up in the back seat at some point or they are. But at the end of the day we decided we really wanted to utilize the rear seat in the aircraft as much as possible and make both a little instrument panel here with a U Avionics AV30 that's going in here as well as doing what we can to bring air and have other uh, hookups here in this center console for the rear passenger. Now there's some really interesting things that we noticed as we were starting to do the layout for the aircraft. One of them is that when we were thinking about the headset jacks, it actually turns out that it's easier and less cumbersome in the cockpit to put the headset jacks for the pilot at the, at the back here on this rear console. The reason is that your headset has the cable coming down from your left ear to a control box and then has to get plugged in. Well, instead of having that come around our stick, around our legs in the front, it turns out it's a really easy reach to get just behind you and you can feel exactly where you need to put them in if we mount those here. Now, the first thing you can see here is this is where our air vent is for the rear seat. But if right behind the air vent we have space to put the headset jacks, then we can put them for both the rear passenger and the front passenger right here in the back. And then they'll just move forward, they won't take too much space up from uh, back here. Now the other thing that's important about our build is we're going to need to have power available for charging a cell phone or an iPad or anything like that. Now in the front you have a great op option because uh, you're able to use the Avidyne IFD 550 as an actual power source in the front because it's got a USB port directly on it. But for the back or if you just want to have the cable do the same thing and come to the back, we're going to use this Bendix King Aero Power Unit which is exactly the same thing as an Apario. So um, here I'll let you see that. And uh, we'll look a little bit closer at that when we actually go and do the install. But we're going to mount that directly across, same kind of position as where the air vent is. So Ben's going to help me out now. We're going to get this laid out. We'll take this piece out, put it in where all those different plugs are going to be, and get to work on another stage of our T51D Mustang build. All right, so Ben marked it out and the hole is now all set here for the aero power unit. Now, one thing that you might notice, uh, if you look closely at this, you'll see a little mark at the top. That's actually a little indexing uh, segment. It, it, it's part of the circle that comes out. And so we need to take a file and notch the hole, come and put a little notch at this top port. Uh, and that way this doesn't turn, it like is kind of locked into place. And so I'm going to file out that little notch and then I'm going to mark from the cover plate where the two screw holes actually will go. Drill those out, we'll be able to mount it, it'll be all set. Unit fits straight in there and all I need to do is screw on the cover plate. Let's get that done.
All right, last step now uh, is to mount the headset jacks for both the front and rear passenger here on the rear center console like we discussed. This is going to be a great location, keep wires away and everything that's necessary along the way. Now, uh, drilling the holes of course is simple. One of the interesting things though to understand is how everything gets wired up when you're dealing with headset jacks in an aircraft. And you might think when you look at a headset jack, it's, it looks fairly simple and it's got a, a metal body on the outside, which uh, is the base of the plug that goes in there. However, one of the things that's really important to do is that this metal body actually has to be isolated from the metal of wherever it's being mounted. We're not using this as the ground. And the reason for that is that we want to avoid something that's known as a ground loop. Now, when you're dealing with avionics, you want all the avionics to be grounded to the same point. If you have different things that are, especially with audio, uh, that are grounded in different locations of the aircraft, they have different resistance levels. And so that means you know, you're grounding farther back as opposed to right next to the avionics rack. And you set up actually current paths that happen there because it's easier for the ground to happen to something close versus something far away. And you end up, that's how you start picking up noise from other parts of the aircraft that have things like ignition noise, alternator noise, all sorts of other things um, that you just don't want in your audio. And that can be really annoying if you've ever been in a plane where you can hear this whining that goes with the speed of the engine or ticking that goes with a strobe light going off or something like that. And so we, uh, the way we avoid that is again, isolating those jacks. So even though the body of this is metal, it's never actually touching that. If you uh, go and d dissect one of these, essentially take apart the assembly that's used to mount them into place, what you find is you have a nut and then you have a uh, regular washer of, of spring steel. Then you have a fiber washer that's non-conductive. And then the real key to this is the next piece down here, which is a fiber shoulder washer. And it can be very easy not to notice this because it's quite small and the shoulder is actually not, not too uh, steep as well. But if you look at it, you actually see that this is basically the shoulder here is 7 sixteenths inch uh, around. And if your hole is 7 sixteenths, the shoulder will push through the hole and insulate the entire plug from the rest of the aircraft. That way, uh, only the grounds that you're bringing through and the shield that you're bringing through with the wires is in contact. Nothing else is in direct contact with the metal surrounding the installation. If you fly a certified aircraft or any aircraft and you have issues, with whining or other noise, this is one of the first places you wanna check is that all of your headset jacks and make sure that if they are not actually coming in contact with the metal, that the shoulder washer is in place, that all the other, the fiber washers, that everything is keeping them from contacting ground and setting up a ground loop. So let's get the rest of this all installed and then we can put it back in our T-51 Mustang.
So while you're doing a long-term project build like our T51D Mustang, the rest of the world keeps going and so does technology. And in a recent flight and trip that we took in our Bonanza, we had a brand new iPad mini that had come out from Apple and was uh, using that and charging it while running some pretty high power applications for flight planning along the way. And what we noticed is it wasn't keeping up and able to charge the iPad. The new iPad is meant to use a USB-C charger or lightning cable um, and it draws a lot more power than older iPads do when they're really churning and using GPS and Wi-Fi at full power. So coming back, we had an issue and we decided to talk to Apario who makes that power module that we used in that center console for our rear panel. And they introduced us to their new unit, the Power Pro, which is what this is right here. That is the Power Pro. Now you notice a key difference there is that it not just has a USB-A, but also the USB-C, which is a high power one, can power at three amps coming out of it. And it can do three amps on both of those different ports. That's a big difference from the other unit. And so we upgraded. The nice part is exact same form factor, exact same plug, everything. So we just drop that out. And from this point forward now, we made the swap. We can complete the installation and keep moving ahead with our T51D Mustang build. Okay, so I'm here with the center console for the rear passenger. Um, as you can see, we have our main hole that the stick's gonna go through. We have the uh, USB connector so we can charge our tablets. We have um, uh, the air vent, and that's gonna be both heat and cooling. And then we have our headphone jacks, and this is the headphone jack both for the uh, forward passenger, the pilot, as well as the co-pilot in the back seat. And what I'm doing right now is I'm soldering these headphone jacks in place. So let's get the camera to look down a little bit. Okay, so you can see the four um, jacks, jack points that we have. We have both the co-pilot, which is down here, and I've already soldered that in. And I also have the pilot, which is uh, this row right here. Now there's two jacks in um, aviation headsets. You have the mic jack, which allows you to talk, and we have the phone jack, which allows you to hear. Um, within those two jacks, um, there are three points. We have the sleeve, we have the ring, and we have the tip. And if you look at a, um, a jack, you can actually see the three parts and they're separated by a non-conductive uh, plastic material. And um, what we're doing is that we're soldering in those three points. One's gonna be down in the sleeve and that's that main, um, uh, that main hole. Then we have the ring, which is this bottom connector and we have the tip which is going to contact the tip of our jack and so I have those um, uh, all soldered into these terminals and I'm going to move on to the pilots and as you can see I'm using clear shrink wrap over it and that's because the approach fast stack has already labeled everything for us and it makes it really easy um, just to kind of you know plug and play in terms of um, the soldering here so I'm using the clear shrink wrap so we can make sure we see the labels and I'll move on to the pilots. Okay, all of the soldering is done. As you can see, um, all four jack points are wired up. They all have that clear shrink wrap that I was talking about over them. This is ready to go inside of the aircraft and ready to start working on the rest of the audio panel and all of the alerts from all the other devices that go through it. Make sure you uh, check out socialflight.com and the Social Flight mobile app. We have uh, tens of thousands of aviation events and places to go. And we also have Social Flight Live at Tuesdays at 8 o'clock p.m. And we've had hundreds of guests and can't wait to have more. So be sure to check us out and stay tuned for future videos.